How's it my brewers? I'm Beth and I'm building myself a steel downhill mountain bike frame and I'm going to go and ride it in Sladming in Austria. Swing arms are done. Did them in the last video, didn't I? If you missed that, you've skipped the right gem. So head back and check that out. I've got to get the front triangle built now. That's what we're going to do in the next couple of videos. I suppose we should start talking about geometry as well then, shouldn't we? Things can get a little bit spicy here. I'm no expert, I just do what everyone else does. Stick my finger in the air and hope for the best. Got myself into a bit of trouble with the deadline though. Bespoke is in three weeks. Got to get the bike built, frame built, welded, painted, Links CNC machined, anodized, get the bike built into a complete bike and get to the show. It's going to be a wild one. I hadn't actually planned on going to the spoke this year. Uh, like I mentioned in the first video in the series, it's not really worth going to the shows for me. Like the, just don't get the return on, on the investment. So yeah, I hadn't planned on going this year, but I've been doing a bit of work for the show, making some of the display stands and whatnot. Um, and I was chatting to Peter and he was kind of trying to twist my arm to go to the show. Uh, and the, like from the tone of his voice, I could kind of tell that they were sort of desperate to get more people to the show. So I thought, it's not that much money, may as well help a mate out and go to the show. So yeah, that's put a bit of a time constraint on the old deadline. I haven't actually got any components lined up for the bike, which is a bit of a worry considering we've only got three weeks um, I did go to Eurobike last year and chat to a few manufacturers and whatnot about supporting the Gasser project and Hope seemed like they were dead keen to support the project so we should have at least most of the components, um, brakes, cranks, wheels, stem, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to have to get my begging shoes on, write some sponsorship proposals, see if we can get some people to back us for the show. There's enough to do with all that without having to film it all, so mission's on. Before I can actually start building the frame and setting the jig and getting all that kind of stuff sorted out, I need to get a few bits lined up. I have some tube that will be a seat tube, but it needs a bit of work before it's worthy. We need a boss for the main pivot to pivot on, and the head tube needs a bit of beefing up. Not only does the seat tube need a bend in it, it also has to have a bit of a topper on it as well. And the reason for that is the tube that I use for the down tube isn't the right internal diameter for the seat tube, or for the seat post rather. So put a bit of extra tube on the top that's got a much thicker wall, and then machine that out to the right size for a seat tube to go on. So that's what we're doing here. Now that I've got those two toppers sorted for the seat tubes, we need to actually bend the bottom bit of the seat tubes. This 35mm by 0.9mm wall 4130 tube. The uh, seat tube on the gasser gets bent, uh, gets bent forward so that the main pivot can get drilled through the seat tube and then the bottom of the tube can meet the bottom bracket. On the pinner it's uh, slightly different to that, you can see the seat tube comes down and meets the down tube and then there's a little gusset put on the back, so bending the seat tube and then the gate's having to put that gusset there, you know, it just brings that shape in and then the gusset in the front here still goes in on the gusset. You know, that just ties everything in then, with the main pivot going through the seat tube. You know, then that's connected, bottom bracket, seat tube, main pivot. You put this big old gusset in there, and then that joins all of that light up with the down tube as well. And then you've got a really solid structure here for your main pivot. 
So, see tubing is a bend in it. We've got one tube already, but it's got a bit wrinkled during the bending process. Bending this thin wall tubing is pretty difficult, so we've had a bit of a mare with this. So we're going to use this if we have to. It'll be all right, it just doesn't look so great. Um, but I'm going to have another couple of goes. See if we can work something out that's going to work a bit better or look a bit better. Yeah, I've tried quite a few different things, so I'm not really that hopeful that we're going to work something out. But this is my tube bending setup. Oh, look at it, homemade, beauty. Tan made it a few years ago when we were making a bike for Grand Giro. We needed to bend some seat stays. This worked out because the gas there is needed a bent seat tube. So we've got our uh, forming die, backing die is not hanging out in the drawer over here somewhere. I think oh, that's not seeing it. And we've got a mandrel that goes inside as well. So this helps support the inside of the tube while it's bending around there so it doesn't get crushed. Need another kind of thing ideally to stop the ripples. So the backing die would go between the tube here and this forming die to try and support those the tube back there. I haven't got one of those, haven't really got time to make one. It would be quite technical. I was thinking about 3D printing one, but I'm not really sure how it would work. If I can get a good result with this tube, then I'll try with a longer tube that will actually fit the frame. But for now, we'll just go with this, see how we get on. Ready? Steady. Oh no, massive ripples. The state of that, terrible. That has come out terribly. Not good at all. Need to figure out a pressure though, I guess. But for now, we'll just have to go with the existing one. Nightmares. All right, well, that's over then. We also need some main pivots for the old gas air. I thought I had some in stock, but I don't, so we've got to make some. Also thought I had some better steel in stock, but I don't. I've got some 35 mil, and I need to turn something that's 20 mil out of it, so we've got a chunk to do. Got myself the old technical drawing up there on the iPad. Fancy. Right, well, yeah, let's get turning. So I get these head tubes from Bear Bikes and it's made out of the same material as Reynolds 631. So it's pretty strong. So it's like thin in the middle and you've got these reinforcement rings on the end. But I've noticed that they're not quite strong enough for when things get rowdy. So like if you're gonna case a big old jump or if you're gonna run a big old triple clamp like I am on the front of your bike, they need a bit of extra strength. And so, what I've done in the past is get a bit of 17-4 stainless because the numbers on that stuff is insane and turn up a little ring to go on the end of the head tube here. So I didn't have any in stock. I put a call out on Instagram asking if anyone knew of a good supplier for it. And I got a message from my man, Davo the Tall. You're a legend, mate. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for me. Uh, but he said, we've got a bit here that you could pinch. So I've got this massive chunk of stainless here. As you can see, it's quite a lot bigger than what I need it to be. 
So to try and save myself some machine time and to try and reduce the amount of this that I turn into chips, we're going to get a bit fancy on Cindy. So I'm going to start off by drilling a bunch of holes and then you still need to machine that out to the right dimensions of the ring and then I'll chuck it on the lathe and turn the bits off. Cindy snapped the drill bit. So we're going to have to rejig this one, probably turn it over and do the other side. Started vibrating like Ken and it freaked me out. It's just meeting up with the holes that I've drilled already. See them in there. I'm just going by hand rather than the power feed for now. Yay! Got two head tube rings now. They all just slot onto the top of the head tube like so. And a silver solder it in place. And that will give us a nice super strong bottom of the head tube. I'll be silver soldering the ring onto the head tube and I've got these offcuts of silver solder that need joining together. That white paste that you see me putting on here is flux. And flux is to protect the hot steel from the atmosphere. So when the steel heats up, it starts to react with the oxygen and nitrogen and all that kind of stuff in the air, which then stops you know, your, your silver solder or your braze or your TIG welding, even MIG welding, stops that from being, being able to work. So you have to protect the steel from the atmosphere. We use flux for brazing and we use argon gas for TIG welding. small unmanned rocket ships you see leaving us will shortly be sending back television pictures as they fly near the surface, but we'll continue our view from orbit also. Through telescopic lenses, Mars looks even more barren, and there's definitely no sign of it being inhabited. As we know now, some things once thought to exist on Mars turned out to be only illusions, such as the famous Martian Canal.
all the bits that we need to build the front triangle are here now. We've got our seat tube, or oh, hey, seat tube topper, head tube with our little reinforcement ring, main pivot, and then in the box we've got our rocker pivot, we've got a bottom bracket, and we've got a down tube. Top tube, seat tube brace, main pivot gusset, the front shock mount goes in here and then the down tube and top tube are connected by those two gusset things, some other bits for the main pivot, those two bits are for the shock mount and that bit is for the bump stops. Right then, my little sprogs and sprockets, we got all the bits that we need to build the front triangle then, even the build, build sheet. So the next thing to do is to set up the fixture, cut the tubes to length, start notching. But I guess before we set the fixture, we should start talking about geometry, shouldn't we? Come on then. So before we get started on this, I need to preface this with saying that I am no geometry expert. Tam was the man with the plan, the geometry genius. He was the one that came up with the 61 degree head angle for the belter. He was the one that started putting steeper seat angles on bikes, which is why you see steeper seat angles these days. You know, he started that out with the Ranger. So this isn't a tutorial. This isn't a instructional geometry section of the video. This is just what I did with my finger in the air, hoping for the best. An important thing to remember as well is that there is no right answer when it comes to bicycle design. Everything is a compromise. You change one thing to make it better, and you're going to lose somewhere else. So, you know, even with finger in the air, hoping for the best, that's basically what everyone else does as well. Same with suspension kinematics and anti-squat and pedal kickback. You change one thing to make it better, and you're losing somewhere else. So bear that in mind. So this is the frame geometry then. Um, chainstay length. We'll start there because that's set by the fixture, which was set by the first gasser frame that I built back in 2020 for Christmas. And that is at 440 millimeters. I've gone for mullet on this as well. So 650D rear, 29 in front, seat tube at 76 degrees, head angle 72.5 degrees. And then your next two is reach and stack. So that's to the top dead center of the head tube. And there's our head tube there, top dead center, reach and stack. And I've also got up here kind of where the handlebars will sit. But that was just to sort of give me a rough idea. So the reach on my pinner is 500. And I've noticed that when things got rough, I was having to crouch down real far behind the bars. And it was giving me a real bad back. I noticed that really taking effect when I was up on the golfy visiting some friends. And they had a specialized e-bike extra large and that had a 525 reach on it and i really liked that found it fitted me way better so i wanted to go for a much longer reach on my gasser because i felt like i was getting cramped on my pinna so we've gone for 525 reach and a stack of 676 millimeters so that's kind of a stack's kind of a byproduct of the length of the head tube and the fork axle to crown Head tube as well, I've gone for quite a long one, 150 mil. So that's to try and get the front end of the bike real nice and high. Um, <clears throat> offset, um, just took that off the um, website for the uh, Manitou Dorada, I think it was. So your head angle and your offset gives you your trail. Okay, and the trail, let's try and tidy this up a little bit here. The trail is the measurement from the steering axis, so the center of your steer tube, how that runs straight down to the floor, and then a vertical line from your front axle down to the floor, which then gives you your trail. So when you're changing offset on your forks, what you're trying to do is, you know, 
affect that trail measurement. And that's basically the car caster angle of the fork. So with a longer trail, you get more of a caster effect. So with a shorter offset on the fork, that brings this line back, which then increases your trail. Or if you slacken the head angle, that line then moves further out here, increasing your trail, giving you more stability. So that's the whole deal with shorter offsets these days, is you're trying to get more of a caster angle, more trail, giving you more stability. Uh, what else do you need to know? Bottom bracket drop, 15 millimeters. Yeah. So with those numbers, we get a wheelbase of 1,351.5 millimeters. It's quite long, quite big. I think it's going to do me a lot better. So I spoke with Tam when it came to designing this geometry. I asked him if there was any sort of science or rules behind choosing a geometry. And he was the one who said, nope, you just stick your finger in the air and hope for the best. So that's basically what I've done. Hopefully it rides good. Again, you take, you know, bikes that you've ridden in the past, you know what works from that and you know what doesn't, and then you can kind of throw something together and you'll have a rough idea of whether it's going to work or not. But the only way that you can really tell is by riding the bike and seeing if you like it. Also, what works for me might not work for you. You know, you and your best mate will like different foods or different beers or, you know, so you just got to suck it and see. I reckon that'll do for this video, don't you? Make sure you come back next time when we actually start getting stuck into the frame. I'll set the fixture and actually start notching some tubes and getting things tacked together and whatnot. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Thanks to everyone that's like purchased um, posters and adjusted tools and whatnot. Especially thanks to Davo for sorting us out that bit of 17.4 stainless. Thanks to Robert Payton as well for these welding gloves. Much appreciated, mate. They're going to see me right for quite a few years, I reckon. Um, thanks to guys that have made donations through PayPal. Really, really appreciate that. In case you hadn't noticed, these videos are quite far behind real life. I've actually been out and ridden the bike in the Alps already. And if it wasn't for those PayPal donations, I would have actually run out of money while I was out there. So really, really appreciate you guys making those donations. There's links down in the description if you want to make donations or if you want to buy stuff. I was kind of hoping that these videos would kick off a lot bigger than they are. I'd actually be able to make some money out of them, but that's not the case. We're doing okay, but not great. So I'm having to sort of put the video production, video editing and whatnot to the side while I focus on doing things that are actually going to bring money into the business. So if you want to see more of these videos coming out much more regular, consider making donations. Thanks again for watching. Appreciate you all.